but it's great to be here. In fact, it's fantastic to be in Chester, because actually Chester is the one of the um, more exciting places from a waitress point of view to be, because nothing to do with um, Christmas penguins or Christmas uh, Hessen uh, puddings. This is all to do with the fact that yesterday our most recent Waitrose store opened in Chester. So when I was putting this presentation together, I was digging around on the internet so you could find a photograph, and that was all I could find, so I thought this looked horrendous. And from what I've heard, there's been a bit of kind of traffic disruption in the area as a Waitrose has gone from being a small little convenience store to some massive great big and uh, superstore. But um, speaking to our uh, press team yesterday and looking at some of the local coverage on the train up this morning, um, they appear to open on time. It's a fantastic new store. Um, I'm not sure if any of you will have time to uh, go and see it before you head back home after the conference, but um, it's certainly a place where a lot of the new ideas about retailing are all coming to a fore. So there's, um, as I'm going to touch on slightly in my talk, there's been some big shifts in the way that people are wanting to buy their food, and all retailers are having to uh, adjust to this um, very quickly because of this big transition within the retail industry. And one of the ways Waitrose is doing this is through making our stores a much more pleasant and attractive uh, place to be. And if you go along to the Chester Waitrose, you'll find many opportunities like there's a new juicing bar, a new cafe, um, some new exciting kind of show and tell um, delicatessen like places too. So it's a really uh, exciting place to be um, from a Waitrose perspective. Um, my normal day job is the senior nutritionist at Waitrose, and I do spend most of my time working on how we can make our foods healthier and help our customers to live healthier, happier lives. But when I was invited um, by Brian to come up and talk to you about our, the role that we played within driving local and regional food um, through our stores, um, I was delighted to take up that opportunity. I work really closely with our sustainable and ethical sourcing teams. Um, that um, are really driving work in this area and it's been great to kind of learn a little bit more about our business in order to pull this presentation together. So basically over the next 15 minutes and from the, um, uh, the brief that I was given uh, by Brian and the conference organisers, I'm um, going to take a little bit of a look and uh, discuss what local and regional food actually is, what it really means to customers. But how does this fit in with the broader trends that we're seeing in the retail world these days? and the consumer trends that we know what our uh, shoppers and shoppers across the country are looking for. I'll be going into a little bit more detail about our really, um, the, our local and regional sourcing um, team that we're really proud of this success that they've had at Waitrose. And then as this is the Future of Food conference, I felt it was um, important that we uh, had a glimpse into the future and how some of these trends could all overlay. So what is local and regional? And I think it's really uh, a very interesting question, actually, when you, um, when you start digging down into this with customers uh, to find out what it actually means to them. Um, you know, many experiences with local food and local food production is at kind of farmers markets, at the farm gate, things like that. You're seeing very um, artisan-type um, foods that have been produced on quite a small scale um, in many instances. Um, there's a perception that local and regional food is better for us, better for the environment, um, so kind of health and uh, the, uh, the world's health comes into that. Um, and that very often it's of slightly higher quality, being made on a much smaller scale, a bit more love and attention and care can be put into it uh, so that the quality can be greater. Um, when you come to actually kind of clamp down what does local and regional actually mean, this is quite an interesting question and it's quite clear if you ask different people, it means very different things. Is it about British, Scottish, Welsh, or Northern Irish food? Is it about food from your particular county? Is it from food from the particular village that you live? Um, and really trying to define what that is um, uh, can be quite tricky. Uh, this is a definition that Waitrose have worked with, and is very closely aligned with the Campaign for the Protection of Rural England, which talks about um, what an ideal local product should be. So make local ingredients to a traditional recipe that really means something to the people of that local community. That kind of helps us when we're um, uh, dealing with the selection and choice about uh, what these products would be, and then how we flag them up to customers. Uh, but what have we found about distance? And the, the key figure of 30 miles seems to be a really significant um, figure for people. Um, in many instances, this is kind of what you feel is your local area, although, you know, coming from living in um, London, 30 miles to me seems quite a long way away, actually, and uh, you could kind of uh, bring that much, much closer. But in <coughs> 30 miles is the kind of
kind of distance that you, if you start to travel further than, than that, you feel like you're in a different area, and maybe some of the traditions and habits are slightly different. 30 miles also allows us to have a base. It makes it much easier for producers to get their um, stock to our stores. Um, but it really isn't straightforward. And um, you know what can be incredibly interesting, especially on borders of places, that living on the Scottish side of the Scottish-English border, local to you could be 200 miles north um, up into Scotland, but definitely not five miles south over into England. So you really kind of get this sense that these kind of uh, regional uh, differences and patterns are very different across the country, which makes when you're kind of sourcing products and wanting to flag them up as local or regional specialities, you've got to be very sensitive to kind of that local uh, environment. So what is the bigger picture? And um, Waitrose, we, um, I don't know if you saw um, recently in the press, there's been a lot about our um, food and drink report that we produce. We do this annually, which is very much kind of looking at the trends of everything that's been going on over the last year. And if you're interested, you can download this from our press centre website where you can get hold of the, um, the PDF. But it's really showing some uh, strikingly different trends in the way that people are shopping. And this idea of grabbing a trolley and going up and down the aisle once a week really is um, starting to fall out of favour. And actually people now are shopping little and often, very often just picking up something uh, for the meal for that evening, uh, shopping in convenience stores more frequently, um, uh, or popping into big superstores and treating them as if they were little uh, corner shops. It's all about baskets now rather than uh, big trolleys. Um, this little and often means that people, you know, obviously time pressed, looking for kind of shortcuts, looking for meal solutions, maybe rather than um, particularly buying um, buying foods. Uh, interestingly, our um, choices are increasingly being influenced by technology and social media, and you only have to kind of look at the number of kind of foodie blogs, foodie um, foodie sites, the amount of people that are kind of tweeting or Instagramming their dinner tonight and sharing it with all their kind of friends and um, anyone that's following them. Uh, social media and technology is having an increasing influence on what we're eating. Um, there's this kind of trend about, um, you know, maybe during the week we're really time pressed, but at the weekend we have a bit more time, and this is when we're really enjoying food, wanting to try out new recipes, try out new products. The weekends are becoming a lot more special. Um, and as ever, we're increasingly in, uh, interested in sourcing out new and inspiring ingredients, recipes from different cuisines all over the world. Um, but you know, you see these kind of trends come and go, but po uh, possibly one thing that remains constant is that Britons are just looking to kind of save their culinary curiosity. They love good food. And from my point of view as a nutritionist, this desire to want to be healthy is coming in more and more um, as we're living for longer. So these are the bigger picture, but what makes people actually choose particular supermarkets? And this is a piece of work that we did around, um, you know, I think we just call them the bigger issues. Ultimately, you're going to choose your supermarket based on the location, the cost, and the quality of the food. And whatever combination of that means, that's the supermarket in general that you will go to to go and pick up whatever you need. When we start to talk about these bigger issues around the sourcing of the food, and some of the ethics behind the supermarkets. It's quite interesting to um, plot them onto this um, uh, this uh, graph where you can see the what's in it for me factor, we call it. There are some issues that are really on people's radar versus some that really are off it. And then there's this feeling that some of it is about, I want to get benefit out of this, versus, well, this is for the wider good. This is all about um, the world being a better place. And some of these really meaty issues you can plot on this graph. And if you look up into that top right hand corner, which is the real um, relevant what's in it for me um, issues, supporting of smaller scale producers and British and local are really featuring highly there for our customers. So of course, like I said, you know, the reason why you choose a supermarket is location, price and quality. But this is where some of these other issues start to kind of pick up. And um, the British and the smaller scale producers is something that resonates very strongly um, with the customers who choose to shop with us. 
Um, much of this work is packaged under our, um, uh, like I said, with the sustainable and ethical sourcing team. And the way we communicate this to our customers is under something called the Waitrose Way. Um, so this really outlines what it is that makes us special, why we feel that we're a better choice than uh, other retailers working in this area. And it states our commitment to championing British produce, tread lightly on the environment, treat uh, the people that we work with and work for us fairly, building long-term relationships, which gets the best possible food and drinks and helps our customers to live more healthily. And this is what we package under the Waitrose Way. Of course, being, um, not having any shareholders means that we're accountable to ourselves and to our customers, which allows us to take sometimes a lot, slightly more longer term view, <coughs> something that's really quick, that's going to um, uh, be flagged up by the um, by shareholders and that the, the city is asking for. So we can really kind of look forward. And over the auspices of the Waitrose Way is where all of our local and regional uh, sourcing sits really championing British. So in terms of, our, um, of what we're offering, um, currently there's around 450 local and regional suppliers on our books. When you consider that we have around 3,000 suppliers in total, this is about 15% of our supply base, which actually, if you think about it in terms of all the relationships that we need to keep up and going, the fostering and the caring of these people, it's quite a substantial piece of uh, work for the number of products that they're selling. Uh, the thing that we're really proud of is our small producers charter. This was launched in 2002 and was a first for a, um, a retailer in the UK. And it really made it clear about what the Waitrose policy would be, developing um, uh, relationships with potential suppliers, and uh, really set it out so it was clear what would be expected of them and of us as we worked through it. Um, all in the aim that we know that our customers will be coming into our local, into our stores and expecting to find a really great selection of local produce that really means something to uh, them as it can be really tapped into the area where they're living. Of course, within this area, fresh produce plays a really key role. Um, you might not know, but all of the beef, pork and chicken that we sell at Waitrose, whether it's fresh or in any of our ready meals, is British sourced. Um, and around 200 farms across the UK are producing um, fruits and vegetables, which are all kind of going into the Waitrose food chain and being distributed across our, um, our estate. Sometimes it, this can get a little bit hidden you know, you might not realise that the farm down the road, their, their produce is actually going into a central stock, but then it ends up in the local branch. It can sometimes get a bit lost in the mix. So um, what we're starting to do is linking the local producers and growers up with their local branches, and you can go in and really see um, uh, fresh produce and meat, getting to meet farmers from your local area within the branches to really kind of get that sense because championing British produce is, um, you know, we're farmers ourselves. We have our own farm down in Hampshire, uh, which produces many primary products, but also secondary things where it's uh, processed a little bit more. So really wanting to kind of uh, show that commitment to uh, uh, British farming. Um, so I mentioned the Small Producers Charter, and if this is something that you're interested in, I do recommend that you take a look at our website because it goes into much more detail about what is required. But it basically hints at the idea that, um, you know, just for a supplier to come in with their product at Waitrose, um, or any retailer really, I mean, this is kind of, um, many other retailers have used a similar sort of system. You know, this is around quality products that have um, a really clear provenance um, that looks absolutely fantastic and really offers a clear point of difference. Of course, it must be safe and legal, and we work really hard with our suppliers to ensure that they understand all the legal and technical aspects of supplying food uh, through retailers. But this is very much about, um, like I said, fantastic local products with local produce made to recipes that are really well recognised in the region. So um, the charter outlines all our requirements. Um, you know, when it comes to things like um, the way that the food is presented, the number of branches that these uh, uh, products would be available in. It's very much tailored to the specific need of the supplier. 
you know, there's no there's no ambition to take a, a very small supply that can currently only stock one or two branches local to their area and to make them suddenly um, be supplying the entire of the Waitrose um, estate. And that's not what we're looking for, and we know that's what not what our local and regional suppliers are looking for either. This is about getting the fit right, getting the assortment right for local branches, and sometimes, very often, producers are just supplying one or two lines into their one or two local branches. So we have um, a, a really passionate and enthusiastic buying team. I'm sure if um, Ollie and Tracy knew that I would snap their photos, they wouldn't be very impressed at all. But they work really hard with um, local regional supply groups where many of these um, small um, so supplies come through and are made um, visible to Waitrose. But they also go out to meet the buyer, meet the producer, those sorts of events where they get to chat to people <coughs> They can help very much um, with ensuring that um, the product is right for Waitrose and that Waitrose is right for the, um, for the supplier and then um, obviously help through with all the kind of the hurdles of ensuring that the labelling's been done correctly and put them into contact with people who can help them with things like that. Um, so very much it's a kind of um, a network of relationships that happen here. Like I said, fundamentally driven by our customers and what they require, um, but very much um, you know, input from head office to make sure that the pricing of the product is right, that it looks right, that we're promoting it correctly, that it's flagged up right in the store, um, and our suppliers as they come through, whether it's through this regional food group or whether they're approaching Waitrose directly. Um, so that was the look at um, the, uh, our local and regional policy, uh, but this finally is just um, the last slide I have which was something that uh, was uh, produced by the IGD, which really showed what a store of the future could be looking like. Um, again, bringing out these real mega trends in what's changing the way that retailers are op uh, operating. You know, really driving multi-channel, this is about shopping online, shopping in branch, shopping in the convenience store, picking it up on your way home, whatever's most convenient for you. Customizing based on your own requirements and needs. But that trend at the end, you can see sustainability, ethical shoppers wanting even higher standards and traceability being so important. Um, so we can still see this really important role for local and regional food. You know, even if we um, uh, go off and, uh, and, a, and a supermarket of the future is a really high tech center where you're scanning your iPhone and it knows exactly who you are as soon as you walk through the door. But that real connection with the food, the recipe, and where it's come from is going to be really important. So thank you very much. There's um, all my details if any of you are interested in finding out any more. And like I said, I'm tapped in very well with this um, the sustainable and ethical sourcing team back at um, head office. So if you have any questions that I can't answer, I'm happy to put you in contact with those as well. Thank you for listening. tasting products that have been developed and you know, just as, as, as customers are expecting them is certainly a key driver for how we're working with our suppliers of you know, the big volume lines that we're selling across our stores. Uh, but I think what's really interesting is this, um, this growing and interested, interested part of our customer base who actually, you know, they're prepared to accept uh, some of this in some areas, but really you know, it's, it's about where the food's coming from um, and uh, what it is, being able to read the label. We can kind of put our local and regional suppliers in contact with some of these bigger organisations so that they can learn a little bit more about food production techniques. Um, you know, there's no reason why just because it's small scale it's going to be made in a, in a kitchen and it all looks a bit kind of uh, simple. So I think the two trends can um, go hand in hand really. And it just shows the, the kind of the, the nature of the consumer of the future really. And what they will be wanting to tap into. Jack, last question, please. Um, 
interestingly, in the talk by a nutritionist about local sourcing, you didn't mention anything about nutritional criteria for what it is. Yes. I, yeah, well, there's the uh, requirement that the, um, the products have to be uh, uh, labelled. So obviously the uh, Food Information Regulation now is asking local and regional products to have nutrition labels on them that they previously wouldn't. So we're having to help our suppliers a lot in how they can get their products tested for nutrition. Um, and obviously, we're along with the principles that we have, uh, Tracy and Ollie will be looking for this overall balance so this isn't about um, manufacturing everything to be lower in, uh, low in fat, low in calories. It's having this um, uh, balanced assortment available for people to select from. You know, all the fantastic local produce we've got um, balances out maybe some of the fantastic local uh, bakery delicacies that are available through the, uh, the bakery line. So yeah, our policy would sit well. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.